Hi guys, <clears throat> welcome to the third part of uploading a picture to a server tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to deal with actually uploading the picture to the server that the user has selected. So the first thing I would want you guys to do is create a, a PHP file called savepicture.php and this PHP file is what's, guys, is what's going to receive the request from the app and then store the picture on the server. So firstly we need to do this because it's a PHP. and First, we need to get the name of the picture, picture that has just been sent to this PHP file. So when we call the PHP file from our app, we need to then we need to give it um, we need to pass a parameter of the name of the picture we want to store. And secondly, we we need to actually pass the image that we would like to store. And this image is going to be in the format of a text, and I'll tell you guys more about this. So, firstly, we collect these two parameters. Then next, we need to decode it. So, when we, when the user selects an image, we need to encode it using base64. This basically turns into a string, and then now we need to decode it using also base64. So that's easy. It's just so decoded image equals to base64. and decode and we need to decode the image so we pass this variable to it and now finally we just need to store the image that has been decoded so now right here when we decode the image we actually get back the image now that the user selected now we need to actually store the image that the user has selected and we want to store in a directory it's called pictures and the path of where we want to store it will have the name of the picture there. This basically allows each picture to be stored in a different location and now we need to actually store the decoded image. So what? let me just talk you through that again. So we get the name of the picture and we get the um, base 64 um, format of the picture we decode it using base64 and then now we store it in a in a location based on the name of the image right so it's stored in pictures slash the name dot jpeg right and then we're actually storing the decoded image there and what we're actually going to do is i'm using a free web host called triple zero web host so i'm going to actually have to store this php file in my server so i click on another file manager you guys can use any other server that you'd like to use but I like using triple zero because it's free everyone loves something that's free so public HTML and I'm actually gonna upload the file which I've already done there but I've, uh, to do that you just upload the file and choose it and also you have to create a directory it's called pictures where all the pictures will be stored in I remember we refer to that directory right here so now we need to actually make our app communicate with our server so we want it that when the user uploads a picture what we want to do is get the bitmap a bitmap is basically like a uh the picture that has been that the user selected so to do this we just bitmap because we're trying to get a bitmap just name that variable an image and we want to get the bitmap drawable so what this does is it gets the it gets the image view image to upload which holds the current image that we're trying to upload and it gets the drawable of it and now we need to just get the bitmap of that drawable so now we have the bitmap of the image we're trying to um, send to the server now we need to create an async task because in order to do any in order to perform any connections to a server we need to actually use an async task this means it's done is asynchronously which means it's done in the background and it doesn't actually slow down the ui thread so to do that a private class because we're creating a new class and this class is going to be called upload image and it's an async task so we need it to extend async task which means it will basically get all the functions of an async task and void 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 because we don't actually want to pass anything to this async task so there we go so the, here's an async task right here that will deal with uploading an image to the server and control o to see all the 
methods that I can implement in an async task and what I actually want is on doing background and post execute so doing background this is where you actually put the code that is meant to run in the background post execute is what happens when the code has finished running in the background so what we'd like to do is well firstly actually when you call this upload image we need to actually know the name of the image we're trying to upload and actually have the image we're trying to upload so what we can do is create something called a constructor a constructor is the first thing that runs in this class right here so and this is how you do you just give it this public the same name as the class and now we've created a constructor and we want our constructor to ask for specific information from the um, from where it's being called so we want it to ask for the image and we also want it to ask for the name and we need to create variables that can be used anywhere in this upload image class so the first variable is called an image and the second one is called a string so now we can actually get the image that has been sent to this constructor right here and then make it equal to the um, to the variable right here the class variable right there so now we'll do the same thing for the name so now let me just walk you through that again this constructor is called and it basically asks for an image and a name and it makes that image and name equal to the variable right here this allows us to use this image and name variable anywhere in this whole class so now we need to actually use it so to use it the first thing we need to do is actually come um, encodes the image into base64 as I mentioned before so to do that is just by array output stream the output stream is basically what holds the the base, the output stream holds a byte representation of the image so now we need to actually compress the image so I'll tell you more about that so we need the format that we're trying to compress the image into and that's JPEG and the quality of the image 100 is the best quality and now we need to actually tell it what stream we're trying to com compress the image into so what this does is it gets the image and puts it into this byte array stream and compresses it into this byte array stream so now we can actually get the encoded value of the image by base64 dot encode to string and now we can encode the byte array output stream which we just compress the image into and convert that to byte array and yeah make sure it's a default encoding so now we have a, a string representation of the image right there so now we need to create a list of things that we're going to send to the server so array list and it's going to be a name value pair a name value pair allows you to hold two um, a key and a value. I'll show you guys more about that. So this is the data we need to send to the server and It's a new array list. So we've created a list of name value pairs So the first thing we need to send to the server is so add that to the list is a new basic name value pair and We need to send the image and the string representation of that image secondly we need to send the name of the image so we need to send the name of the image and now so these are the two things we need to send to the server so now we need to create come down here and create a method called HTTP so this method re returns a HTTP params. I'll tell you guys more about that, and we'll call it get HTTP request params, right? In this method right here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna like um, set up the parameter that the HTTP request is going to have. The HTTP request is what we need is what we need in order to gain a connection to the server. So we need to create. A, so this um, request params holds the the holds the basically the attributes of the request we're about to send to the server so the first thing we need to do is set the timeout for the connection so dot set connection timeout so this is when the connection times out so 
we need to put that into the HTTP parameter. We want it to time out, let's say, after 30 seconds. It's a millisecond, so I'm times in about a thousand. The second thing we need to do is to set the set the soul time out, which is basically another type of timeout when yeah, it's basically another type of timeout, right? And I'll also set that to 30 seconds too, right? And then finally, we just need to return this HTTP request params. So let me just walk you through that again. We create a HTTP, HTTP request params, which is the attribute of the request we're about to send to the server. We we'll give it, we we'll give it a timeout, two times out, and then we return it. So whatever method calls this will be returned this HTTP request param that we just created right here. So now we need to use it up here. So HTTP params, HTTP request. And now we need to get the HTTP request param. So that will just get us this um, param we just created here. And the reason I've chosen to do it like this rather than just putting this there is that we're going to need to use this twice. So this allows us to prevent code duplication. So finally, I'm drawing to an end now, we need to create a client which is going to assist us in sending the request to the server. So we need to put the param in there tell, telling the client the type of attributes it should have, basically the timeout it should have. And then now we need to create a post because we're sending a post request to the server. And yep, so we need to actually get the address of the server. So my server address is private static because the server address is going to be constant and it's a string I'll call it server address and you find your server address if you're using triple zero web host you find your server address right here so I'm just going to copy mine over right now um, so that's my server address so now my HTTP post can know the address of the server that I'm trying to post the data to and the file we're actually trying to call in that my server is save is save picture dot php. So remember, we just we created a PHP file here and stored it on our server. Now we can actually access that PHP file by using the server address and using the post. So now finally, we need to create a try because the next set of um, code we're about to type in can throw an exception. Exception is basically what happens when the code goes wrong. And what we want it to do is just print the stack trace and that shows up right here for us to be able to see exactly what went wrong. So these two codes I'm, I'm entering right now can throw an exception. So post set entity. So we need to tell the post, we need to give the um, data to the post request. So remember we created a list of this data to send right here. So data to send. And now we need to basically execute tell the client to execute the post so execute post All right so yeah just walk you through that again we convert the Im we compress the image into a byte array output stream we encode the image so it um, converts it to a string we put the name of the image and the encoded value of the image into a, a, a list so we can send that to the server we define the request parameter so we know the type of attributes that the param should have, including the connection time. And we create the client which will help us send the um, data to the server. And we actually post the data to the server right here. So finally, what we need to do is just create a toast that shows the user that the image has been uploaded. So toast make test. A toast is like a little image, a little text that pops up on the screen. So we need to get the application context, and this is the what the the text that has popped up, and we need to tell the toast how long it should last, so just a short amount of time, and then show the toast. All right. So that's about it. So if we run this right now, hope nothing goes wrong. Oops, there's something we've forgotten to do. Sorry, just stop that from running. All right. We've actually created the file. We've created the class right here, sorry, but we actually haven't we haven't called it yet. We haven't actually used it. So here, when the upload image button is clicked, we want to say new 
upload image and give it remember we need to the constructor now is asking for the image and the name so we need to give it the image and the name is basically what has been entered in the edit text so remember that was called upload image name remember we defined it right here so we can use it anywhere upload image name dot get text dot to string so this gets the text the user has entered so now we've actually given the constructor the image and the name so now this should work and we need to execute async task that makes it run basically so now we can actually run it let's see how that turns out and that right there okay, here it is here it goes so right now if I go on my server you can see that the pictures is empty right now right so let me upload a picture of a cat cat upload image just wait for it to upload which again yep that's the toast right there saying the image has been uploaded and if you come here and refresh this now we can see that our cat image is, has been actually sent to our server and then we can see our cat right here being displayed in our server so thank you guys in the next tutorial we will look at how we can get back the image from the server